With festival and event season fast approaching, you and your product deserve to be the center of attention. With a unique mobile event trailer from Brant Mobile Rentals, you can leave your 10x10 pop-up tent packed out. The trailer features two serving windows, multiple size fridges, and four tops for kegs on board, just to name a few features. And a non-branded trailer allows you to add your own personal touch. Visit BrantMobileRentals.ca or reach out for more information via email to info at BrantMobileRentals.ca or on their Instagram at BrantMobileRentals. Welcome to Season 3 of the Craft Beer Connoisseurs Podcast. I'm Chris. If you're new to the podcast, we're three friends and a producer who like to showcase craft breweries and their beers. Also, we like to end every episode with a short conversation on a variety of different topics. If you're not new to the podcast, well, you know what to expect. The three connoisseurs haven't changed, and the producers are always a wild card. Whether you're new or returning, please feel free to listen to all of our previous content. And remember, follow us on Instagram at Craft Beer Cons, send us a friend request on Untapped, or subscribe on YouTube at Craft Beer Connoisseurs. Also, drop a comment, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Now for today's episode. Welcome to the Craft Beer Connoisseurs. I'm Chris. I'm Tyler. And I'm Brett. And along with us today is producer Mason. Mason. Hello, Mason. What up? <laughs> what up, Mason? <laughs> what a name, Mason. All right. So in today's episode, we're going to be reviewing Rhythm and Brews. Out of Cambridge, Ontario. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be having two beers in the episode, as always. The first is Symphony, which is a, their core hazy IPA. And their, one of their newest releases, Brit Hop, which is an English IPA. Nice. Makes sense. Yeah. And then to finish off the episode, we're going to talk about what mediums we've previously and currently used to listen to music. All right, so let's talk about rhythm and brew. Let's. We should do that. Yeah, let's do it. I let's mean, do it. it probably makes sense to do that. They're being featured on this episode, yes. right? So, yeah. uh, they are located at one thousand Bishop Street North, Unit Ten, in Cambridge. And uh, interesting fact, I guess they are right across from the big PepsiCo manufacturing facility that produces Lay's potato chips, as opposed to the the small one. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, it's, it's, it's quite large. <laughs> the, big, the, big the, the small ones on the other side of yeah. town, I guess. Okay, yeah. good to know. Good to um, know. So, I don't know. Do they have Lay's potato chips at the brewery? Uh, they do not. Oh, Ooh, wow. Uh, Must be a shipping charge or something on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> got Probably. Uh, so, they were first launched in 2016, uh, but they brewed out of Reinhardt's facility in Toronto back then. And then in 2017, their bricks and mortar location was purchased and renovated and then finally opened to the public in May of 2018. Very good. Mm-hmm. So Rhythm and Brews is founded and still run to this day by Andrew Beyer, who's also a firefighter in his spare time. Yes. Yeah. He's, spare time. Yeah. Whatever spare time he has, I guess. Well, I mean, we'll get into the next part, but he works a lot. Yeah. So together, he spends about 100 hours a week between both professions. It's a lot of hours. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I can say a couple things about these firefighters, but we'll just let that be. <laughs> Uh, Andrew was a home brewer. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, but also has many certifications, uh, you know, um, such as the uh, Cicerone, the, the, the Prude Home. We've, we've talked about them before. Hey, us too. Also the BJCP judge. So not nice. only uh, is there a lot of, uh, you know, firefighting going on. The, the guy a, knows his beer. A, a lot of. And how to fight fires. Yeah. Also, you guys might not get this, uh, but there's a bit of a connection here. Also, a huge music fan. Never would have guessed. Yeah. Right? It's almost like he tied that into the brewery. Right. Yeah, exactly. So Adam uh, Lovemarsh is the assistant brewer uh, who just recently joined in January um, after the closure cl- closure of Descendants. So Adam came over from there, and uh, we'll probably talk about Adam a little bit later on, I think. Yes. Yes, we yeah. can do that. Especially cool. me, because I met him. Uh, so the brewery itself. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Did you get an autograph too? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I could have, uh, but he was a little busy. Should have got him to sign a record. Could have. Yeah. Uh, the brewery itself features a 10-barrel ten ter- uh, brew house, uh, the ability to brew up to 15 hectoliters and 16 draft lines, along with an event space with authentic DJ equipment for all local musicians and promoters to use for events. And this was added to the <clears throat> main space in, and renovated in 2021. Rhythm and Brewers also uses, used to use bottles. So I remember yes, the kind of couple of first times that we'd went. Right. Um, it was all bottles. Now they got a canning line. I love uh, the, I love the bottles. 
I know you're a big fan of bottles. I yeah. do like bottles too. Mm-hmm. Um, it just feels more authentic. I get yeah. a different taste, right? Oh yeah, we've talked about that before. So they had a candle lighting installed, and then obviously they got Symphony uh, into some local LCBOs, which you can try to go pick up. Actually, you all right yeah, there? Yeah. Wrong in the throat, brother? Yeah, I'm, I'm fighting a bit of a thing right now. Don't worry. Oh well, the, <laughs> good to let us know halfway through the episode. Jeez, I would have full disclosure ahead of time. We got to start doing medical tests. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So as we just mentioned about their, you know, kind of space that they have there, they've become notable for being an event space for diverse and inclusive inclusive events, including drag shows, makeup workshops, and along with, of course, as you would expect, live music uh, that happens every Friday and Saturday night. And they also just recently hosted Randy. Randy? Uh, Randy? If you watch Trailer Park Boys, uh, so Randy from there, uh, his uh, comedy stand-up tour that apparently sold out. Yes, the cheeseburger tour. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's well, you know because you got that cheeseburger locker. <laughs> no, I knew there was going to be somebody doing reference, and I figured it was wasn't going to be me. So Tyler, yeah, is, is Randy the one that walks around with no shirt on? Yes. Yes. Okay. Their Instagram actually shows him walking around with no shirt on. <laughs> I, mean, I think he did probably did the whole stand-up with no shirt on. Yeah, he also sat down probably with no yeah. shirt on, I too. Mean, we, we are actually, just for disclosure to our listeners, uh, we are all wearing shirts currently. I was going to say, if you say, like, if you take <laughs> yeah, your shirt if you off. say we're not. <laughs> yeah, if you take your shirt off right now, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Whether it's the frog in your throat or whatever, I'm throwing up. I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, who's actually been to the brewery besides uh, Randy? <laughs> besides Randy. I have not. I have been. Uh, I Producer have not. Mason has been. Tyler, mm. I guess no. No, I, I just said that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I guess you haven't been. So three out of the four have not been. Uh, no, no. Mason has been. Mason has been. Yeah. yeah. So three of the four have not been. You've been? Yep. Okay, then two. Uh, how were the beers picked up? Two, two, <laughs> well, I did not but go beyond, to beyond just, beyond just picking them up, have you been before? Yes, I've been many. It's actually the first brewery I went to after uh, the co- first COVID protocols got opened and we can go to patios. Nice. And three weeks after my daughter was born. So then why don't you tell us a bit about the brewery then? I will. So inside the, ta- <laughs> inside the tap room, you are greeted by a spacious view of the brew house and a wood bar with different ticket stubs from concerts uh, spread across them. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, some picnic table and stool seating for you to enjoy your pint or flight. And your flight actually comes in the shape of a record label. Okay. Also cool. So, yes. I mean, you probably got that out of the script. But what did you feel at the brewery when you went? Well, I was greeted by a spacious view of the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, like, I'm looking for stuff that's like more of like a personal touch. And you're like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give well, the information. If you want from the, the personal script. touch, added, yeah. it was actually what, what did you, what the did you first, feel? the first time that I have picked up beers for the podcast. Where both my daughter and my wife came. Nice. Yes. So we actually had a little... You're uh, still with her after the comments uh, from previous episodes. So far, so good. <laughs> uh, I mean, might change when I get home. Who knows? Yeah, Maybe true. she but, hasn't listened to it yet. Yeah. No, she hasn't. Um, but anyway, so we actually... I actually got there a little earlier. Our time to meet was 4.30. Got there like 10 after 4. Um, and kind of sat at the bar. We had a flight and uh, my wife had um, the pickle beer which you might uh, hear about a little bit later. Um, another pickle beer, right? Right, another, yeah. Loves her pickles, loves her beers. And so Adam actually was um, sitting with his group of friends because they were finishing up a little bit of an event um, there. So I kind of just waited till 4.30, and I just turned around and said, Adam? And Again, like, finger guns. <laughs> yeah. Did you and he's finger like, gun him And he's too? like, Brett? He's like, yes. And then all of a sudden we went on tour. They say, I, did we just become best friends? Pretty much. So he gave me a lovely tour of the whole facility, I got to look right inside the... Uh, Were you tanks. greeted by a spacious view of the brew house? <laughs> <laughs> I actually went into the brew house itself uh, and got to lovely view of the tanks. You and saw their the, 10 barrels? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Tanks, got pictures of inside. You'll see that on Instagram so as well. it's a good vibe then? Yes, very good vibe. Nice. Yes. I'd, I haven't been there, obviously, for a, a music event or anything like that, but I feel as though it's one of those times where if there's a band playing that I really enjoy... Might as well make my way down and uh, enjoy a couple of their beers for sure. So for people who are out of town, who don't live in Cambridge, yep. uh, I believe it's relatively close to the 401, right? Correct. Yeah, you're looking maybe four minutes. Yeah, nice. Four minutes? Five minutes, you get stopped at a red light. Ah, <laughs> those red lights. <laughs> I mean, givers, they do have a string on them, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is true. They just pop out of nowhere sometimes. It's exactly. like, ah, red light. <laughs> <laughs> so on Untapped, Rhythm and Brewers has created over 240 different uh, beers, and they've had some cocktails and seltzers as well, uh, with an average overall rating of 3.55 out of 5, and just over 14,000 check-ins. 
So, oh, yes, sorry, I, th- I thought they would maybe be a little higher than 3.55 because, you know, we'll, we'll get into this, but I've had a few of their, their beers. I, I, I think they make pretty good stuff, and yeah, 3.55 seems a little low to me. I think for the most part, they've made some quality stuff. There's a couple beers I've rated on the lower end. Uh, There's but, also some beers that you've rated on the higher end. Yes, yeah. and I'm going to get in that in one second. Uh, so I've had 21 different uh, creations from other members, and my highest rated is a 5. And they had a blueberry wow. shocker. <laughs> and it was a blueberry marshmallow stout. Didn't you just have that when you picked it up the beers? No. I actually had it last year. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so You silly goose. I, but I was having it while picking you guys up beer. And I probably shouldn't have had this stout because that's the time I figured out the math for all the purchases from like Wavemaker and Farm League and Rhythm and Brews and some. It was a real gong show. Yeah. Uh, I got money. I probably lost about 30 bucks on it, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, anyway. That tax calculation, too. Exactly, right? Sh- Ever since then, I make you. sure I add that 13% to everything, okay? Sure get you. And separate it and all that stuff. So um, you've had 21. Yes, I have. How, I, many, how many have you had? I've had eight. Uh, my highest rated was a four, and that was a raw sound IPA. Uh, Chris, how many have you had? I've had five. Okay. Uh, my highest rated was also the Raw Sound IPA, uh, which I gave a 4.25. Very good. And producer Mason's at 16. Uh, his highest rated is the Raw Sound. Again, so everybody loves Raw Sound, apparently, at well, a 4.5. Yeah. And th- that's a core beer, right? Yeah. Raw Sound? No, yeah. it's a special. Special. Yeah, so it comes around once a year. So <laughs> that does it come around every year? Yes. So it it's it's kind of a core beer, you know what I mean? Like it's a season, seasonal. It's if you a will, season. Yeah. It's a seasonal, but it it comes back around because yep. sometimes we see these seasonal beers that just come and they go. Yep. Yeah. Um, but and that's sometimes what I mean. It's, it's like, every season. Right? It's a rotational. It's a rotational beer. Then. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. a better way of instead of saying core seasonal, it's a rotational, um, which is good because um, I mean three of us enjoyed it very much so. So when they bring it on next, we'll have to go down. Yeah. Yeah. So did you have any food when you were there, Brad? I did not, actually. Oh. Uh, I had just ventured over from uh, Zeller's. And oh, the, yeah, the, the food and Zeller's. The food Capital truck of Zeller's. the world. <laughs> not the food truck, no, the food court at the uh, Cambridge Center and then went to Zeller's. Uh, so I did not have any food. Sidebar, everyone is, like, flipping out about this food truck from Zeller's, and every... When I was a kid, every time we would go into Zeller's, the food court would be absolutely empty. So I'm not sure what everyone's so excited really? about. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I always got like Well, their... if you were in the food court, that's probably not where the Zeller's okay, was. The, so. the restaurant <laughs> of the Zeller's, whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I, I don't know. I used to get like the Toasted Club, you know? I don't know. They had good quality food for a kid. Maybe not for an adult, but for a kid. You well, I was, it was a the kid. Best. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, Rhythm and Brews, their food. Uh, so they've been experimenting with Andrew Smoker. Uh, in his backyard and uh, trying to bring a full-fledged menu to the brewery, which should be implemented this summer. Um, But currently they have a few small snack items like mac and cheese, hush puppies, and sweet potato pies. Um, But yeah, smoker, that would be nice to have on on the menu with some beer. Yeah. Nice little brisket, nice little pulled pork. Absolutely. Perfect, right? So also offered is their VIP membership for $50 a month. So it gets you 10% off in the Taproom and Retail Shop. Access to all their live events, including hanging with the band after a show. A four-pack of beer and discounts on all workshops. Seems wonder like a good you, investment. Yeah, I wonder if you get to pick that four-pack or if it's just randomly selected. That I do not know. I just said four-pack of beer. Yeah. I'm assuming it might I mean, you were beer. there. You could have had these I could have had that conversation. Yeah. I was too busy in the brew house. Sorry. I mean, if, you're in the, if you live in the Cambridge area, fit for 50 bucks. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's Live a month, music. so you got to be going pretty pretty frequently. But you got to have like a commitment for sure. Yeah. yeah. Is it a four pack of beer every month? Yes, four pack okay. of beer every month. I'm okay. assuming it's probably going to be their their, their new newest releases. release. Yeah, yeah. I would assume yeah. so. Yeah. But. Now there's a big shout out that has yes. to be listed here. Yes, for sure. Do you want to do that? I will do that. Yes, because I'm I'm the dog person, as we've kind of learned. Yeah, as we found Chris. out last episode. Um, so a big right. shout out to Charlie. So he's the brew dog at uh, Rhythm Brewers. And actually, the last time, not the time I picked up the beers, but the previous time, uh, my dog was with me, Ollie, and they had a great play date together back in the day. Uh, he actually, not my dog, but Charlie, just recently tore his ACL. So they had uh, through a birthday party where all the proceeds went to his surgery uh, for his ACL. So we hope that Charlie's doing well and we'll be back in the brewery soon, greeting us all. Yeah. That's a tough one to come back from the ACL. That's usually, you know, you're That's out for the season. nine to 12 month injury, for yeah. sure. Rehab that. Yeah. yeah. Oof. So that tap room and retail shop hours are Monday to Wednesday, 12 to 7, Thursday, Saturday, 12 to 12, and Sunday, 12 to 5. 
So make sure you get out there. Yeah, um, I closed her down on the Sunday when I went and picked up the beers. Yeah, big guy. <laughs> Got home <laughs> well, you know, when, when I was there at four thirty. When I was there at four thirty, I closed her down. Yeah, so the, tu- yeah. the tour was like half hour itself. So. You guys are shutting this down. I'm gonna go home. I'll be home by six. Yeah. <sighs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Well, as always, we're going to link to their social, their information on our social media. Let's get on to taste in the first beer, boys. All right. We're back, and we're going to start off with a big thank you. How big? Gigantic. I, I was going to try and put this into, like, I don't know, like, four eights or four six per tameter or something like. Oh, like. Oh, that's time. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be big time. <laughs> 120 beats per minute. Bam. That's how big. There it is. Uh, to Adam from Rhythm yeah. and Brews. Thanks, Adam. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, for the beers provided on today's episode and also giving a tour of the brew house to Brett. And tolerating um, Brett. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest piece. I mean, unfortunately, Brett was the only one that represented us. Oof. So Adam has a distorted understanding of who we are. And we can come back and make up for anything that happened. Like, we've seen Brett in previous episodes, um, the way that he pours, uh, the mess that he makes. So um, we apologize on behalf of the craft beer connoisseurs, Adam, that if Brett made a, you know, a mess, um, we're sorry for that. Didn't make any mess. Uh, actually, um, fun facts, uh, going back to the blueberry marshmallow stout, uh, we're going he literally back texted a- a- Andrew right then. He's like, we need to make this again. So if it comes back. We are getting some free beers. Okay. You heard it here first. <laughs> Brett's. Which means they probably won't make it. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so all the pictures that Brett took, um, don't know how good quality they are, but you're going to see those on our Instagram. Uh, and the first beer we're going to have today, which you'll also see a picture of on our Instagram, is Symphony, which is a hazy IPA. And it comes in at 6.9% ABV with 40 IBUs. Yes, so Symphony is a hazy New England juice bomb loaded with hints of tangerine, grapefruit, and orange zest with a soft mouth feel. Ooh, soft mouth Straight feel. to the point. Not a long-winded explanation And I believe here. this is their flagship beer. Yeah, this basically. is the one you can find in uh, a lot of LCBOs. Yeah, very good. So you can follow us on Instagram at Craft Beer Cons and on Untapped at Craft Beer Connoisseurs. So the rating for Symphony, if this is up-to-date, producer... Um, is 3.62 out of 5 with 1,600-ish check-ins. Give or take. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of those 1,600, there are 14 5 out of 5s. Brett, have you given others a 5? I've not, no. There you go. All right. So let's grab our can. Let's grab our glass. And let's open her up. What the heck happened to you? Brett! Everybody can hear this whizzing. Tip it back up. Tip it back up. Tip it back up. Put your mouth over top of it. You're in recovery mode now. You're in recovery mode. You're in recovery mode. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Put it it over the glass. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Oh, my God. Uh, we're going to need a towel producer. Uh, if you could get a towel ASAP, that'd be great. Uh, you're in recovery mode hard here. We're going to have to be throwing out some furniture. I feel like in the next little bit. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, here you are, Brett. Thanks producer Mason for helping out. Uh, just put it over top of the towel. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, Atta boy, not on the rug. Yep. Tyler, you and I poured fine, and, and Mason, uh, no issues with the can. Uh, producer, thanks for coming through in the clutch there. Um, Brett, what happened? <laughs> so, fun facts about this, okay? Um, I actually had a symphony a few months ago that also did the same thing. Really? Uh, yeah, actually, I did. So what? I what, sent a video of it in our group chat, actually. Yeah. So what? What happened here? You want to give us a little play-by-play <clears throat> breakdown of what what occurred? So I think uh, maybe a little bit over carbonation and a little bit of the bad pouring. Um, you know, a little bit, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. Let's just say that. Um, I but, mean, I don't think that, that your pouring had to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think you had was, the opportunity that to pour just that. A, that was a crack and yeah. a, a blow up. It started whizzing yep. immediately. So I think. 
This one's not on you. I don't think you did anything wrong. Yeah, I don't think this is a bad pouring. I think this is just the the can. Because all of them, yeah, all of them have been transported the same way. That's correct, yeah. We opened them up the exact same way. (laughs) And we went to pour, well, two of us went to pour. Three of us went to pour the same same way. And, and yeah, yours just took a spin for uh, a different direction. I mean, uh, what is it, you know what? The last couple of weeks just have not gotten your way. No, no. They're getting very wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, I think we need to. You know, to the, the saddest thing is he, he was looking at it, like, with a sad look on his face. Yeah, like, I, you were like a sad puppy. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you tore your ACL. <laughs> Maybe I did. I mean, I was an MCL, but still. Anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. We are talking about Charlie, right? Yeah, no. The dog. It was I, a, I was ACL. T- telling you that I... To torn my MCL. Yeah, we don't care about you. Okay, we care about the beer. Uh, do you want to do you want to try to pour the rest of that in yes, here? Yes, I will. You pour the rest of that. Chris and I will talk about what it looks like here, and uh, I've got some residual if you need to fill your glass. Up. Yeah, me too. So we, we can share because um, that's what we do. Breast here. Yeah, that was uh, okay. That was <laughs> interesting. So what we're looking at here is a uh, a very typical kind of IPA. Yeah, uh, nothing kind of special. You kind of get like those. Uh, um, sun-kissed orange kind of uh, look to it. Yeah, standard West Coast color. Um, on the nose, I would say, oh, that smells really good. It does, yeah. Kind of like that citrus tangerine maybe on the nose uh, with not a lot of uh, pine scent coming through, which you would expect from a West Coast. But um, It smells very juice balmy, right? Yes. Like it's, it's hitting pretty good. Brett, oh, this, is a, new, that. this yeah. is a New England. Okay, my bad. This is not a West Coast. Yeah, well, actually. you said West Coast. Why yeah, West Coast? I don't know why I was saying West Coast. Yeah, look at it's it. It's a hazy IPA. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. This is definitely hazy, but yes, it, it smells like that tangerine and that orange zest. But kind of like to the max. You know yes. what I mean? Like it, it, it does seem uh, rather elevated, if you will. Um, yeah, it smells really good. Interesting. So, Brett, you, you said that this has happened to you now twice. Yes. Uh, I was just trying to get up the uh, video evidence of that. Yeah, no, no. We, I, I, I know there. what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I believe what you're saying. It's all good. Um, Chris, so, did you talk about the glassware? I think you did, right? Oh, I didn't, actually, because we had a little uh, mishap a little, there. A little mishap. Yeah, Brett, so, Brett, I'm sure people can figure out what glassware we're drinking. Yeah, we are. Yeah, dr- no, but still, for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah, right. So we are drinking it out of an IPA glass. So, of course, make sure to use your proper glassware and make sure that uh, you're monitoring your cans when you open them. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Oh, you're already you're sipping into it. I, I, need, I need it after that. <laughs> you're straight straight into it. I, I, that, I get that's that. fair. Yeah. We, it's been a rough ride. We talked about yeah. the smell. We talked about that. Brett, please have the last bit of my can. Well, I still got more of my can. Don't worry. Oh, pour it in. Well, I'm trying to make it not overflow right now. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're but, you're you're, you're but, good. But speaking of the can, yeah. Oh, there you right, go. Yeah, right on. Right. Thanks, Mason. Yeah. Yes. So it's got some lovely music notes and a nice little curvature motion. The can is purple. You don't see many purple cans. It's a nice can. It's got yeah. like that metallic purple, right? Yeah. And, and what is what is unique about the music notes? Oh, I'm gonna go with like hops. Perhaps. Yeah. There you oh, go. On the bottom there. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I can I can see clearly now. My ah, beer's almost done. There you go. <laughs> yeah, four four time. We get the uh, the note says hops, so it's good. Do you, do you want some of my extra? No, no, no. no I'm good. Wow, I'm good. I've right. had this, I've also had this before, so you have not. I don't think so. I have not. So it's fine. Yeah, drink fresh, keep cold. Uh, Mason wants to kind of I don't know. He's oh, brew date. Pull, pull ah, this yes. Oh, I yes. see what you're saying. Brew date, yes, gotcha. very good. Okay. Um, so yeah, they put that on the can as well. The brew date. Yes. Instead they did. of like stamping on the bottom, it's it's actually it's like on right right on the label itself. That's good disclosure. That seems like it would be more work because you'd have to update the can label every At, single every, time. Every time, yeah. But I guess if you're you're running off as one batch, it might not be that difficult. Do we all have the same brew date? Just to I have uh, October first, twenty twenty two. Same. I do as well. I just want to make sure. Yeah, you might actually. Does yours have like a little explosion thing beside it? No, that's just another hop. Okay, I just I just was wondering if no, it's that, like the that's identif- the code for yeah. exploding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like the uh, the milks that used to moo. Maybe you want to buy. Yes, yeah. I was there actually going to say that earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you win something? No. Well, yeah. let's call Adam and ask. Yeah, maybe you get to go to a, a free drag show or something. Yeah, actually, you know what this is? This is actually payback from him because I was the one who went. Ah, right? oh, there you go. So if Tyler would have went, it would have been. 
Nice yeah. man. I would have done that. Yeah, Chris, exactly. Um, let's start drinking it, uh, Chris. Yeah, Brent, we why don't you start it. talking about the top five flavor profiles here shortly? Or is there something that you're picking up? Let's maybe get to that first. Um, definitely, like as you said, that juicy, um, dank bomb, if you will, right? A little bit of grapefruit in there. Uh, lots of citrus forward, though, I would say. It is, but it's not as much as I might have thought based Off on the, the nose. Yeah. Okay. The dankness, though. Uh-huh. I'm getting a lot of dank, for sure. Dank, yes. What a great English word. Anyway, uh, top five flavor profiles. Might as well jump right into it. Uh, number one is hazy. I mean, it's hazy in look. Yeah, right? hard to mm-hmm. taste hazy. Yeah. I mean, if you had like eight of these, then maybe, yeah, you could taste the haziness. I think you would see hazy, too. But I all, like, so here's where I'm kind of wondering, um, because the dankness of it, like, I feel like I'm tasting a lot of wet hop. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's I, fair, yeah. And so maybe that's the haziness flavor profile. I mean, I'm just kind of like spit like bomb putting together. Moist? Yeah, like yeah. like like a wet hop yeah. is is maybe that haziness kind of perspective from the flavor profile. That's how I'm going to associate it because okay. that's what I'm getting. And yep. going back to that one comment you, you just made, Chris, about like you were kind of expecting more of like a juice bomb. Yes. Is I'm I agree with you is I'm not getting really that so much as I am getting kind of like that wet hoppiness. Mm. Yep. Yep. No, no, I, I agree. Number two, juicy. Not as no. much. I wouldn't put it as two. I simply okay. wouldn't. Okay. Three, hoppy. I, I don't know. Like, because there's not a lot of hot flavor, like those juicy, you know, notes coming through, I wouldn't say so. And it's kind of like a vague description right yeah and i I think maybe that hoppiness is that kind of like that that wet hop kind of dank taste yeah is it bitter for you perhaps that's what producer uh mason's coming with there's a there's Uh, bitterness there but but it's not but it's not like a bitter punch either right like it's kind of like a it's a subdued kind of it's what i would expect uh, yeah okay yeah Yeah. Uh, number four citrusy not as much as i would have hoped for based off the nose Okay. And that kind of falls into number five here, too. Yeah, and number five is grapefruity. Yeah, again, not really getting that. I would say, like, I don't want to say this beer lacks flavor, but it kind of does, right? And it, it does nothing jumps out at you, I would say. Yeah, I don't know if it lacks flavor because there are there's flavor there. It's just not the traditional kind of, like, New England IPA or, like, kind of style like from the juice perspective right Mm -hmm. yeah i'm getting i'm getting the hoppiness of it i'm getting that dankness of it i'm i'm not getting like the fruit or the grapefruit kind of like punch right so maybe that that, maybe that's what it's supposed to be right and and partially it could be just due to the freshness of it right uh, true maybe i still think we're well within our yeah i think we're we're still well within our our means if you will yes but i would say and you know we'll get to our personal ratings later but i would say i'm a little bit disappointed in this one based on how it smelt i had high yes. expectations yeah i agree with you yeah yeah and i think that's again like that's uh how you use those hops is you're going to get something off, off the nose the aroma is going to be different than the flavor profile and it just didn't come through yeah. in, in the flavor but we'll get there um so, so let's yeah. speak of other people's thoughts on untapped uh, tyler sure yeah first one joel h uh the handle is joe kath on march 16th very refreshing Slightly grapefruity and citrus tones, 3.75 out of 5. Okay. Next one comes from Jeremy H. Uh, handle is the Archivist 13. Uh, Jeremy likes his archives, I that's, guess. Yeah, it's a good handle. I like that. Uh, on January 14th, said dry citrus front, creamy center, pithy back. And Jeremy gave it a 3.75 out of 5, kind of describing that whole journey there. Yeah, I could understand the pithy back portion of that. I, I, I can pick it up on that. Yeah. Um, so I'll get our rating started. I'm going to give this a, I'm going to give it a, a three. I'm going to give it a three. Okay. Mm. I, I'm in the exact same spot. I'm going to give it a 3.0. Like I said, I had high expectations for this, um, based on how it smelt, but it, it didn't meet those, unfortunately. So I've had this before on tap at Rhythm and Brews and I gave it a four. Uh, this one's just going to go a little bit lower for me. I'm going to give it a three, five. Uh, the reason, not just for the fact that I was wondering, kind of blew up in my face. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, I was wondering if that was going to come just into for the it. fact that it just. This is a beer. I think it's probably better served on tap versus in a can. Yeah, that's totally fair. And I think maybe let's say theoretically speaking, if 
we all went to Rhythm and Brews and had this one on tap. We will go. We'll, we'll definitely the rating go. might be a little bit higher. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I think you said it earlier. This is probably a beer best enjoyed fresh. Yeah. Producer Mason, um, don't, that face is not looking pretty over there. Uh, <laughs> just going to say and that. That's, and that's normally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he only, he's only going to give us a 2.25. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think, own. Uh, yeah, I, I think we kind of like sussed out why uh, why they feel that way as well. Uh, so that's going to give us an overall score of two point nine three seven five. I think we'll round that up to an even three. Yes. You guys okay with that? I am so. more than okay with that. Uh, so we're gonna hit play and move on to beer number two. All right, we are back. We are. We're going to have a, a second beer. I think for this uh, beer that you're going to introduce, you should probably do your best British voice. All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I will tip top there. It's a uh, Brit hop. We're going to be talking about an English IPA. It's 7% uh, ABV. The IBUs are actually on listed today. I yeah, I'm you're not going like, to do English. I know. I mean, <laughs> you're almost Australian. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. But I mean, oi, oi, oi. Anyway, it all comes from the same monarchy. That's true. So this is a traditional English IPA recipe using Maris Otter malt, then EKG hops used during the boil, and then dry hopped with way more EKG. So Adam pretty much described this as think of EKG hops, and then think five times that. That's what we used in this beer. Okay. 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 So this should provide an intense malt character without the caramel crystal flavor. The earthy, grassy hops provide a dry, taffy-like beer with a fermentation from the traditional English ale yeast. All right. So on a... Yeah, mm. on Untapped, this Brit hot beer, at the time of us recording, is not listed. What? But they did have like a Brit pop, I think you said. Yes, Chris. they have. They have a Brit pop, but um, we do have the can here, uh, and it does specifically say Brit hop. It does. So, so either um, somebody doesn't yeah. know how to spell, or they had a Brit pop back in the day. Well, the Brit pop was, I think, it was about two years ago that people were checking it in. So, and it. I saw the cans in the pictures, and it distinctly said Brit Pop. So <laughs> maybe this is just a new tag on that beer. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Well, let's grab our glass, grab our can, and let's open her up. Okay, hold on, Hopefully hold on, hold with on. no explosions. So far, so good here. You guys are okay? Ah, success! <laughs> Winner! Daniel! Daniel. <laughs> All Great right. success! <laughs> so we are drinking this one also out of an IPA glass. So make sure to use your proper glassware. What are you guys? What are you guys seeing here? Because I'm seeing something different than uh, the hazy IPA, which is nice. Yes. Good variety. Which, which you would expect. I would say this is uh, light brown. Would you Would you say light brown? Almost like the caramel color. Yes, caramel right. color. Yeah, caramel color. Yeah. yeah, I'd say like a honey brown. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, honey brown caramel. Yeah, I'm good at that. Like a honey badger, you know? Ooh, yes. Honey badger don't give no. You can fill in the blank. No, Honey Badger doesn't care. Don't care. Honey Badger doesn't care. Um, just to get into the can label before we start going kind of in, in terms of the uh, smells and everything. Um, I'm going to say it looks like the British Three Musketeers, Larry, Curly, and Mo. Uh, Larry is playing a gu- broken guitar. Did, were you going to say yeah, guitar? guitar? <laughs> you yeah, were going to say guitar. Larry uh, played a guitar. Curly looks like he's trying to, I don't know, give a high five to somebody. And then Mo is just playing the old ukulele in two different colors of shoes, pink and red. Yeah, and uh, they yes. are they are animated, right? So yes, people, animated. Yes, people yes. have drawn these. Yes, um, yes, they have uh, ventured out and got themselves a local artist to do a lot more of their uh, newer stuff versus the symphony. As you just mentioned, that was kind of just their basic. Uh, Good level. job, Brett, on that. Thank you. Good Thank job. You. Yeah. Uh, the there, three stooges. If there you will. is uh, a little bit of. Do you, got, do you have some sediment? Is that what you're saying there, Mason? There's a little bit of sediment in his. So um, I'm not really seeing a whole lot in mine. I've been looking for it, like a, a Where's bit. Waldo, but yeah. not a whole lot. So p- presumably a little unfiltered. Could have um, also went with where uh, the Waldo and dressed up in caricatures on the can, but we did not. You know what the the. Would Maybe you a say, clown? You say curly? Curly kind of looks like a little bit. Uh, yeah, Larry Curly and Mo. That's the curly thing. looks a little bit. Where's Waldo with uh, yeah. his his outfit yes. there? Um, yeah. So uh, smell. What do you guys smell in there? Malt. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is like uh, this is a traditional English beer smell. Exactly. Now I'm not too familiar with the EKG hop 
itself. Me neither. Um, so I'm looking to obviously indulge in this and, and find out more about it in terms of how it tastes and looks. This is one of the hops that kind of threw me for a loop. And it's like, oh, EKG, I've heard of it, but I've never really kind of tasted it in beer. Because British beers aren't exactly maybe my go-to, if you will, right? Sure. Now, sure, I, sure one thing I do want to say here is maybe call you out a little bit, Chris, on this. But you you have been to uh, the UK. You've you've been to Britain. You've I, been, I have been to England, yes. You've been, you've been to the England. Um in the England, yes. would you have beers that are similar to this? And the serving style or temperature of them, would it be this or would it be maybe a little bit warmer? Yeah, maybe a bit warmer. And they do um, like their cask beers, mm-hmm. um, so without kind of any carbonation. I will say when I was in England, um, I wasn't necessarily the, the connoisseur I am today. It, it sure. was it was definitely a few years ago when I was yep. I, I dabbled a lot in the ciders there, so ciders okay. are quite big in, in nice. Britain as well. Now, one thing to kind of note is that this is a, an English IPA, yes, um, instead of like a traditional kind of English ale. Correct. Yes. Right. So I could see why serving temperature. This you'd probably want to have it uh, a little bit cool, colder. Producer uh, Mason is currently hugging the beer to <laughs> try to warm it up. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's an IPA, not the ale. If you're going to have like a traditional English ale, I, I feel like you you would okay kind of warm it up. Well, and yeah. if we know the you know the origin of IPA, right, where beers were being sent from England yep. to India, uh, and they were super hoppy to preserve them yeah, so pres- preservation so yeah. maybe this is kind of brewed in that in that original a, style a little homage to it if you will yeah if you will I homage will. not homage however you yeah. whatever floats to your boat and that's how the beer was transferred from england to india that's right in the boat in the boat um all right well let's let's drink it because then let's, we're going to need to get to some five uh, flavor profiles here relatively let's quickly. be united in this kingdom and drink it okay let's that's unite the weirdest thing i've ever heard in my life You're telling me that's the weirdest thing you've ever heard me say. Mm-hmm. Huh. I would have thought something different, but okay, that's that's, that's fine. Well, <laughs> Brit Brit Hop has got some hop. Yes, definitely some hop there. There's some That is hop. So the last beer, Tyler, you mentioned, you know, the wet hop kind of was coming through. This kind of you know, it, it kind of reminds me like if I were to chew on like a hop pellet. Have you done that? Yeah, I have. And, and similar to this, a little bit, yeah. yeah I can see it. I'm, like I'm, not, I'm not critiquing. I'm just trying to get the like story. Very, very earthy, um, very earthy, very. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the best way to describe it. Very earthy. I was a little bit disappointed when when we saw that there was it wouldn't include that caramel flavor because that's what I was kind of mm-hmm. hoping to get a little bit. But of this. off to the side of it is there's. Is there the toffee kind of aspect? Yes, of it, the right? toffee, yeah. like, the Werther's original aspect of this. I'd almost say. See, I'm not getting that. Like the earthy no, uh, is overpowering, the, that. and and that's that's what I'm just trying to kind of figure out. So, and I think maybe in this beer you're getting a little bit of. Uh, when I say toffee, I meant right? taffy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> point of clarification on that. Fair enough. Um, I think in this beer versus the first one we had, we're kind of seeing the difference in styles between what um, Andrew likes in terms of the, the symphony, the hazy epic versus what the new brewer Adam is making. Cause this is kind of one of that he's kind of brought in. Right. Okay. So kind of seeing the different styles between, which is nice. We've never had that too much. We've never done an English IPA. No, no, we, we have, have not. not. I so, think we've talked about like maybe in our uh, next collab, kind of doing like an English kind of something. Right. But, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll see. If somebody wants to collab with us yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll definitely do something along those lines. But, um, yeah, I don't know if I'm getting kind of like a biscuity, uh, aspect of it, but again, it's it's it's, it's malt driven. So when we say like it's malt malt heavy. Um, it's not the caramel kind of aspect of it. Whether it's kind of like a biscuit, whether it's like an earthy biscuit, I don't even know what that would look like. An earthy biscuit? Yeah, you know, like it's it. I agree with you. There's very much like an earthy tone to it, and it's not like an yes. undertone. It is an like it's an overture, <laughs> overture, <laughs> so overtone of it. Right? Just to get into the uh, EKG hop. Okay, so it's called East Kent Golding, and it's supposed to provide characteristics of lavender, spice, honey, thyme, and earthy flavors. Obviously, we're going to get earthy. Are Sorry, getting... did you say thyme? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, lavender, are we getting any lavender to this? No. Okay. Well, it's spice. Spice, I'm getting some spice. A little bit, yeah, yes. I'm getting a little some bit. spice myself here. What about the honey aspect of it? No, I'm not no. getting any honey. Thyme, thyme, whatever you want to call it. 
a little like a tiny bit i would say but yeah. again it that's so similar to earthy right yeah i, Correct, agree, yeah. I agree yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit more information yep. on the English. Uh, All right, KG, so kind of go from there. <clears throat> top five flavor profiles as put together by producer Mason. <laughs> you had to do work because, as we mentioned, there's no one tapped for this beer. So, so Mason put down bitter slash malty. Anybody? Anybody? Um, everybody wants. I think it, it might be in my top five, but not number one. Yeah, for me. I agree. Okay. Number two, earthy. That is like number, number one, one me, with yeah. a bullet. Yeah. Concur. Oh, load of co- god complex, cock and pull it. Sure. Downtown and an early around. Yep. Uh, number three is bread. Um, maybe a bit. A I, little I bit. I almost go like grainy almost versus the bread. Oh, I like that. I like yeah. grainy. Yeah, and I think that's, again, where I say like biscuit, bread, grainy. I think we're kind of all in the same neighborhood there. Uh, number five, toffee. Um, again, because it's kind of staying away from the, 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 um, the aspect of like the it's they say taffy not toffee because it's not caramel right right toffee is caramel flavored now yeah. um, producer Mace is just pointing out that apparently you do not like the number four no because what I did if you actually recall and I think uh, producer Mason's head was buried in the keyboard is yeah. I said bread biscuit grainy or kind of all in the same area so that's probably where he kind of missed that and then did this overhand like ah exaggeration. And then you obviously didn't catch it either. Um, no, I just I actually really enjoy a producer that does work. Yeah. Uh, he's actually like, you know, kind of saying no, this, I, this, this. I get Versus that. a couple of previous producers just kind of like, were like very distant. Lackadaisical. Yeah. At least he's present. Yeah, well, at least that's he's a, present, that's right? True. I get getting that. But that's just it. So that's why I kind of like paired bread, biscuit, and grainy all as. as no, I, I'm following your process now, and yeah. I'm pretty sure you get my process of actually having a producer who cares. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to have one. Yeah. So fun fact, biscuit is actually what they call cookies in the UK. Yeah. So um, Any other fun UK facts? Yeah, what do you got? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no fun facts. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. So, um, you know, welcome to my flat, everybody. And, <laughs> there uh, you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Take a look at my boot. Should we get some takeaway? Yeah, we should. I would, get some I would prefer some crumpets, Curly. That's about it. You keep going back to the tea. Is it crumpets. almost tea time? It, it might be. All days. Well, tea I time. mean, if the weather keeps getting good, yeah, by all means, it's tea time for sure. <laughs> Let's go to some thoughts from the untapped users. Uh, because this is a new beer, we have exactly zero <clears throat> silence. Not applicable, I believe, is what we have. So this might be the first time that we have to add a beer onto untapped in order to check it yeah, in for the so podcast. I, right? As I said, at the time of recording, there's currently no. Um, right. There could be by the time this episode gets released. And we're not going to tell you when we're recording exactly. this. Yeah. Uh, it may, there might be one or two. Or, Days or before 10, release. Or 20. <laughs> yeah, we don't record it, it live at 5.30 in the morning on a Thursday morning. Just we that. don't? Well, that's good because it releases at midnight. So. <laughs> 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 you son of a gun. So Chris, what do you got? 12 and 5.30. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. It moves with you. Uh, Must uh, be your, your listeners in Nepal. Your, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Shout sure. out to Nepal. And uh, us. a recent bump up in Japan too. Ooh, uh, Chris, nice. go ahead. What do you got? Yeah. So out of, I'll start off our ratings. Um, not my favorite. Uh I'm going to give this a 2.25. Um, as I said, like I'm not, I haven't had a many English IPAs. Um, kind of, yeah, it's, it's struck for, I'm going to give this a three. Okay. Kind of sit in the like, again, not my favorite style, obviously, because I haven't had many, but I think they try to do something and it didn't turn out t- terrible, but it didn't turn out great either. Yeah, I, I think that there's a, a lot to be said for this style of beer. I'd be interested in having more uh, English IPAs just to see what they're doing um, and, and kind of compare them with that. Um, but what I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a 2.5. Um, Producer Mason's going to give it a 2. Um, so, yeah, again, it's just something that doesn't really fit our palates. And, yeah. and that's okay. That's, uh, that's, what, that's what drinking beer and cra- I should say drinking craft beer is all about. Some, there's going to be b- beers that you don't like. There's going to be beers that you do like. This maybe just doesn't fit our Yeah, and again, I think this is this could be an evolution thing, right? Uh, you could come back in about two years, and maybe we've had more English IPAs, and it might sit differently. Same thing with stouts for myself or sours for other people is like you have to grow and develop. Um, it's not just like a, a snapshot in time. It's it's a it's a process, right? It's a story. Yeah. But as we said, like we've also given very high ratings to other beers they've had. So think of I the really blueberry mushroom stout, the raw sound IPA. You know, they've made some good stuff and they've made some not so good stuff, and that's just part of the journey. And 
if Rhythm and Brewers are going to keep creating more beers, we're going to keep having more of their beers. Oh, I'll keep drinking them. Right. Yeah. Some may be good, some may be bad. So, uh, overall, that's giving us a 2.4375, which we will round up to 2.5. And that concludes the review of Rhythm and Brews and, you know, Adam for putting up with me in terms of me coming there and beers provided for today's episode. Uh, thank you to Adam. Um, so, up next, we're going to discuss how we listen to our music. All right, we're back, and we're going to talk about our listening experiences over the years. Ooh, I don't even know what that means. Our listening experiences over the years. Well, uh, let me explain. I've listened a to a bit. lot of things. I bet Ooh, you have yes, over yes. the years, including Brett and I. <laughs> <laughs> I have I listened to myself. Not oh my so much God. Mason, though. No, no, Mason's very quiet. <laughs> I might actually prefer his soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, can I just get that on loop? <laughs> So specifically, we're going to talk about what mediums we've not Long Island medium um, <laughs> we've used to listen to music. Um, starting with, so maybe I'll preface this. I think that we are, you know, the four of us are kind of in a unique position where, throughout our entire lives, we've seen so many different ways to listen to music come and go. Yeah, and there's it, been a lot of waves right, yeah. of yeah, music types, and it's been quite unique, right? So, Correct, yeah. starting with uh, cassettes. <laughs> So see, actually, I don't think it was really involved with the cassettes, though, because I'm no. obviously a little bit younger than you guys. But I actually am going to take it back a little bit, if you don't mind. Okay, the eight track. Oh, you yeah, you listened to some eight track. I did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So uh, my grandparents had like one of those big units uh, yeah. that had the AM, FM, the cassette. It was a record player as well, and it also had the eight track. And so uh, I did listen to some eight tracks on that. And I, I actually wanted that unit. So if you guys can bear with me just a little bit on this, a uh, little bit of a tangent. But my grandparents had this beautiful, it was a wood cabinet, wood speaker thing. And it was like the thing I wanted. So I was like, when you guys croak, like that's what I want. Um, they're still alive currently. Um, <laughs> we'll see, touch and go some days. But I mean, they're 95, 93. There's nothing like telling people yeah. that are living that when you're not here anymore, oh, yeah, I yeah. want your yeah. stuff. If you need me to check on them, though, they live two minutes away from me. I can it, go check on them. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> you might need to. Uh, but I was like, when you guys go, like, that's what, like, that's the, the only thing I wanted. Because we would go ahead, we'd listen to records, we'd listen to eight tracks, is is beautiful. Um, and I got some of the records, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. But uh, my parents ended up taking that uh, to like Habitat for Humanity, and I didn't get to use it. And then my wife ended up getting me this record player, and that's why I have this record player that I have with me now, which we'll tie but in But does it on. play eight tracks? It doesn't. Okay. How many times have you used a record player? Uh, quite a bit, actually, yeah. Right now, yeah, right. I listen to Johnny Cash Hurt all the time. It's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Nashville at the Johnny Cash Museum, Jill, my wife... Uh, listen to it on repeat for probably 20 times. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Have, a, have a nice beer. It was actually done by Nine Inch Nails first, but besides the point. Yeah. Uh, no, it was no, not. Uh, it was not. done by Johnny Cash first. Yeah. Yes. All right. Go go ahead. Let's uh, walk through that. <laughs> um, anyways, so the first, so I mentioned cassettes. So I have very limited experience with cassettes. I remember listening to things like Sharon Lois and Bram on cassettes, like kid music, right? Who, yeah. Who's that? You don't know Sharon Lois and Bram? No, I don't. The I song don't, I know ends. Bernie. The <laughs> song that never ends. You know, they did that as well with Skinner Marinky Dinky Dink, Skinner Marinky Doo. Oh, I still they listen did to all those songs. that. Just the they Wiggles did. are doing that now. No, that that Blippy. was Sharon Lois and Bram were the OGs. They were the OGs. Yeah. They were they were the who who's out there now? The Wiggles. They yeah. were before. I literally them. just said the Wiggles. Yeah, yeah, they were before the Wiggles. So also fun with cassettes was it was really easy to overwrite a cassette, so you could record yourself on a cassette really simply. So that I have a lot of uh, memories of doing that. So sounds like you guys don't have a lot of experience with cassettes. I do. No, I do not. I do. I actually had, and if you recall, Chris, you might be able to pick out your memory once I mentioned this. In uh, my 94 Mustang. Yes, yeah, so you had a cassette player. I had a cassette player. Yeah. And in that cassette player, I would play the Tyler cassette. Those songs that had my name oh, yes, yeah. embedded. You remember that? Yeah, I yeah. do remember that. Mason had the same thing. So they would play Mason songs. Uh, <laughs> or they would play Tyler songs. So it was like, hey, Tyler. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, it was I, dope. I appreciate all the times that I was in your Mustang. You never played that playlist. <laughs> Like, yeah, they didn't have CD players in cars for quite a while. 
Like it was cassettes for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I think the first I remember was the my dad bought a 2001 Chevrolet Venture and it had a CD player in it. Yeah, yeah, so that that go. sounds about right yeah, yeah, in exactly. the 2000s. Yeah, so what a great the, van though. What a great van. <laughs> the next one, of, of course, CDs. Um, so this this is probably the most influential medium that I had. So my dad had a, has a humongous CD collection, yeah. and I would just. That's kind of how I got into classic rock. I would just grab a CD off the shelf, put it in my boombox, throw my headphones in, and just listen to the whole CD. Um, yeah, that I, I was a big CD fan. So for myself, I was a big entrepreneur come grade five, grade six. Okay. and I know uh, where you're going. Yeah, exactly. Started and, selling, selling and I covers. actually <laughs> asked what people wanted on their CDs. And I would make a playlist on, their CD, on the CD, blank CDs. You and then burn it. Yeah. yeah, I'd burn it. And charge $15 per CD. Wow. And I was probably rolling in the dough come grade five, grade six, because I was making at least like a hundred bucks a week. Wow. Sounds illegal. So then whenever, copyright infringement. So then when, yeah. Well, I used LimeWire, obviously, yes, as producer yeah. Mason did. But uh, just anyway. LimeWire? Nothing yeah. before LimeWire? No, just Bear LimeWire. Bearshare, Kazaa? No, LimeWire. Yeah, Kazaa, yeah. yeah. Because then there was an excuse to get a new computer every year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you had to spend $600 on the uh, virus. No, 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 no. The computer. viruses My were unreal. My parents spent 600 bucks on a new computer. I did not. I don't need money. <laughs> Brett's over here making like $13 a week. <laughs> yeah. uh, because then everybody in like, especially grade six, I remember this. Everybody had like Sony Walkmans. Yes. Yeah. And they were all listening to CDs that I created for that. Speaking of Sony Walkmans, how about walking with it, like holding it really still so that it didn't skip? Yeah. <laughs> that was a feature, right? Yeah. You could get it with like yeah. 15 yeah. seconds skip. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, so I, uh, I took a job uh, at the St. Mary's Landfill and I ran out of batteries while I was there because I had my, my Discman with me. Yeah. And it was like a Discman purse. Like it's yeah. what people have now. It's like I, you put Discman in there, put like four or five CDs in there, like my Ally McBeal, uh, like whatever. Um, <laughs> Ally McBeal. It, yeah, it was great. It was great. That was a um, TV show. But yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah like, you, like, you could get the soundtrack for it. It was great. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. But I ran out of batteries. Yeah, that happens. So in order to find batteries, I was in a landfill. So I took batteries out of, out of a ghetto blaster and put it in <laughs> <laughs> my discman so I could carry on. And then I used a radio. I took the antenna off the radio, snapped it, and I used it as a poker. Uh, like to find batteries? No, no, to clean up the landfill. <laughs> I used the poker. It was great. I, I wish that the first song you listened to after you did all that was Carry On My Wayward Son. No, a lot of it was like the, it was almost like Dawson's Creek. You remember that oh theme song from Dawson's Creek? Uh, One Tree Hill. <laughs> oh. So Brett Mason is kind of like you, burned his own CDs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and but he wasn't making money off them, was he? <laughs> no, for himself only. Yeah. Um, but also infected his computer with lots of viruses. Yeah, that his so. parents purchased. See, yeah, I never did that. Great. I would burn my own stuff, but I'd put on my own like malware. Yeah. And, and and antivirus. Like, so it I sounds like something you myself. would do when you were twelve. Yeah, that's I so did. Nice. So yeah, the best was. was the best with CDs was so my mom was a librarian uh, before she retired. So she would bring home CDs from the library, and then we would just burn them. Burn them. Yeah. yeah. And she would hate it because she's like, "That's illegal." And we're I'm like, like, "You're doing right, it is, mom." So what? I want the music. Do you uh, remember your first device that you had to put uh, music on? So not just burn CDs, but like, let's say digital downloads. Was it just on like the computer or did you have an iPod or, or something of the sort? So I think we're kind of getting to that. So yeah. um, probably my MP3 player. So I had a, uh, what was it? I forget what the, RCA, I think. Yes, mine an, was RCA. An RCA yeah. MP3 player. Yep. You needed the uh, memory card yep. to put in it. I could put about 16 songs on it. And uh, I had more than that, but okay, yeah, keep going. Yeah, I would, I would. Listen to that and, uh, you know, maybe every other day change the songs up on the uh, memory card. But, yeah, that was kind of like my first other than, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the Discman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was kind of Digital my, downloads. Yeah, that was my first uh, where I would take the illegal downloads and put them onto my MP3 right. player. Yeah. yeah. No, I had the same RCA kind of thing, but I just yeah. had a bigger memory card. So I could fit like 250 songs, I think, on it. I was wow. I was rolling in it, boys. Let me tell you, my like first one, I was like, I'm going like I was making a bit of money, you know. I was like a 14 year old, I was making cash. <laughs> Dell DJ, 
<laughs> I'll have to show you this thing. This thing was a unit. <laughs> really? Mine Apparently. was like tiny. No, no. Really Mine small. was a unit. It had a full LCD screen on it. It had a scroll thing. She was a Yeah, mine beauty. had like a CD and LCD, or like a LED screen and a scroll on it. Yeah, mine had Yeah, no. This thing was an absolute unit. Oh, my, mine just basically said like track one of 14. And yeah. And yeah. don't 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 you remember like those days that you would download from like Kazaa Bear Share and be like Bell 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 Disco Disco yeah. DJ Music Music One O Two Chris just had Barbie Girl on repeat and then it would go into Barbie Girl but there'd be like a whole thing it'd be like remix remix I'm a Barbie Girl <laughs> like do you not remember those yeah. things uh, what was that. Uh, Dolobeats.com. <laughs> yeah. dot com. Jason dot, Derulo. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Fire Action Station Nation Nation. Uh, yeah, I love that stuff. Right? I'm pretty sure we all had iPods too, right? Though. Like, yes, absolutely. I you did had. not. You, you did not have an iPod. I, that was the Dell DJ. Did you have an ePod? It was a Dell DJ, bud. I'm telling you, I rocked right. that unit. I'll show you a picture after all, like offline. Maybe we'll post it up on our Instagram as well. It's and like, then what about today? Because we're in like 2023 now. So what are we using today? Yeah, Chris? so Spotify for yes. sure um, is what I'm using yep. Myself, on a yep. daily basis. Yeah, I think you guys are Apple guys over there, right? I don't listen to a whole lot of music per se. Like I'm a lot of podcasts. Um, obviously, the crappier Conspiracy is my number one podcast. Yeah, I'm, I'm a listener to number um, one in your heart. But I mean, I've got Amazon Music that I just like. I don't really listen to a whole lot. Um, I guess Sirius XM. So satellite yeah, radio, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw that on at work. If uh, it's a rainy day, I'll put on coffee house. If it's something I'm feeling a little bit edgy, the I'll highway. Um, fun facts. Uh, the producer, Mason, uh, he uses Spotify. But then when you see other producers kind of like share things on Instagram, yep. it's all Apple podcasts. Yeah. Strange. What's up with that? I don't know. Weird. Interesting. Weird. Yeah. So in terms of all the things that we've talked about, what's your favorite? So personally, mine is streaming because it's like, if I want to listen to a specific song at any time, I can listen to it. So I can go on Spotify. The yeah, search for a song, listen to it. Search for an artist, listen yeah, to it's that. It's right there. Yeah. yeah. I find Spotify's interface way better than Apple's interface, personally. Sure. I mean, most of our listeners listen to us on Apple. Uh, fun fact. Apple for Podcasts. Yeah, Apple Podcasts, podcast, yeah. yeah. Um, I like the rawness of the record. Um, kind of going back to it, we kind of skipped over a little bit. Yeah, is it is nice to throw a record on and just kind of listen to the eight, flip it, the eight. It's a mood thing. It's um, making a comeback though, the records. Uh, kind of, yeah. and and I did get a lot from my grandparents. So even though the unit itself, I didn't get, uh, I did get a lot of the records as well. So it is nice. It it's a raw kind of sound. Yeah, I don't have a record player. Um, I would like one, but I don't have that inventory of records, right? So sure. that's kind of and I can I hook this need. up too because the technology is there to hook it up to like a, a sound bar. So right. it is nice to kind of like use a little bit of old with new. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, so that's going to be it for our discussion. Let's uh, hit you with our farewells. All right, that's going to be it for today's episode. Uh, you can listen to us on record, uh, cassette, a track, uh, Spotify, Instagram, YouTube. I think half of those are true. Literally anything. You know what? If you want it on record, I'd put it on record for hey, you. Hey, burn us onto a CD. We're going to take our best sound bites and put it on a record. Yes, <sighs> we will. Which is literally none of Brett. <laughs> uh, that's going to be it. Thanks for uh, for showing up today, guys. Yeah, thank you. So thank you again to everyone for listening. Keep on listening every other Thursday as the Craft Beer Connoisseurs release a new episode and on our off Thursdays for a producer special. And make sure to tell your friends, family, and your favorite streaming device because we should be number one on them. That's true. So from all of us and producer Mason, I'm Tyler. I'm Brett. And I'm Chris. And together, we're the Craft Beer Connoisseurs.